Hey guys, what's up? This is Dingo Crikey here with another commentary video, this time discussing a topic on Transformers Robots in Disguise. If you are interested in more news and commentary on Transformers Robots in Disguise, Transformers 5, or the Transformers Generations toy line, then you can check out my playlist and channel where you can also find over 20 of my Transformers stop motion videos, some of which are previewed here. But for this video, I'm going to be discussing the recently released images of the Transformers Robots in Disguise figures that were revealed at this year's Toy Fair. For those of you who regularly keep up with the channel, you would know that I recently did a video like this for the figures of the Generations toy line that were revealed at the Toy Fair. And of course, there were also a lot of revelations in the Transformers Robots in Disguise toy line, and I've kind of debated on whether or not to do this topic, but in the end I figured, why not, it gives me something else to talk about, and a few people did seem interested. Now, why I was kind of going back and forth on this is because I don't know if I'm going to be covering everything that relates to the Transformers Robots in Disguise toy line, and pretty much that is because I'm probably not going to be collecting this line. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to get any figures from the line, but it would be really unfair for me to be judging them all the time when I'm really not getting most of them. You guys who watched my videos during the Age of Extinctions main run knew that I bought a lot of the figures, so, you know, I could talk about them fairly. Um, same with the Generations line, even though it's hard to keep up with all of them. These guys would just be too much, and overall, I'm not too impressed by them, but this Toy Fair did make some interesting revelations that I wanted to discuss anyways, that in some cases might have changed my thoughts, sometimes for better or worse. So, let's see if this year's Toy Fair can improve our overall perceptions of the Robots in Disguise toy line. Let's get started. No surprise whether or not there were good figures revealed at this Toy Fair. We knew with Hasbro's new direction and trying to make a lot of kid appeal within these lines, we were going to get some bad figures as, you know, this kid appeal, these really simplistic Transformers that are oftentimes just repeats of other characters, were going to be pretty prevalent in the Robots in Disguise toy line, kind of like they were in the Age of Extinction toys. So I figured I'd just start off with, with them. And that brings us to one step change or drift. Um, yeah, this guy obviously doesn't look that great. I mean, you could argue, obviously, that, well, it's a one step changer. What can you really expect? But um, obviously, this is nothing too impressive in robot mode. But what can you really expect? I mean, I don't really have too much more to say about this guy in robot mode. Vehicle mode, I mean, it looks cool. The one-step changers do oftentimes have better vehicle modes. It seems like they're made more for the vehicles than the robots. So, you know, I guess it looks cool. Definitely nothing to make the figure worth buying. And then we have one-step changer fracture. He does look better than drift, less blocky. He does look like he actually has arms and legs rather than just a big block of plastic. Yeah, not that great. Some nice detailing for the class, but um, his arms are even really hollow, so doesn't look nice in robot mode. Vehicle mode, it's a pretty cool vehicle mode. I would like to see a deluxe class version of this figure because the vehicle is very, very cool. It's nice to see a Decepticon who isn't a beast also, as most of them from Robots in Disguise seem to be following that trend. It's kind of a shame that they used up the term Predacon for the Dragon Transformers in Prime because it would really fit these guys well. And then we have the one-step changer version of Thunderhoof. For a one-step changer, this guy's actually kind of impressive. Granted, he's nothing great, but um, he does have a nice color scheme. For the class of figure, he has some nice paint apps, could definitely use more. Um, overall, a kind of nice build, you know, doesn't look big and blocky or as stiff as some of the other one-step changers, though I'm sure he is. And then in vehicle mode, yeah, he looks kind of cool. You could definitely tell where his legs and his arms are. So I guess he suffers in vehicle mode due to the better robot mode. What can you expect when a Transformer only has one step in their transformation? That's just a problem with the class altogether. So moving on to the next class of figures, uh, we have three step changers, Steeljaw. Not going to talk too much about this guy or else it would just become a rant. Three steps isn't much of a step up from one step obviously this guy is nothing too impressive definitely not as good as the deluxe class figure even in vehicle mode doesn't look that great so 
yeah, this guy seems like one of the worst of this class we've seen in a while. Then we step up to the Mega Class figures with Optimus Prime. Now, I've got to say, this guy looks like he's going to have some problems in the areas of articulation and a lot of problems as far as simplicity due to probably a very simple transformation. But he does have a very, very nice color scheme. I believe this is kind of like a G2 Optimus color scheme. And I think it works really well. It is something different for Optimus, for one thing, rather than just the typical red and blue. And he also has some different paint apps going on. Um, he has some dark blue in the back, light blue throughout the body. Body design even is kind of cool. But if you take a closer look, you could tell that this guy probably is going to be a very simplistic figure. So I think that's what he has going against him. I would really like to see a nicer version of this Optimus because I do think it looks like it has potential. But for this figure, just meh. Then in vehicle mode, not a big fan of this Robots in Disguise Optimus vehicle. Um, really just obvious looking trailer. We've definitely seen better trailers in the past. This one just... It looks like a bunch of parts just clumped together to form a, a rectangle, really. It doesn't even look like a trailer. Maybe it's supposed to be futuristic, but um, not a big fan of this vehicle mode. Or, for that sake, the Warrior Class's vehicle mode even doesn't look that great. Anyways, from the Mega Class figures, we move on to Super Class, which I believe is going to be sort of like an 18-inch tall figure. And there we have... Bumblebee. Another Bumblebee. And, ew, oh man, such hollowness. I mean, take a close look at this guy. His legs, his arms, his just about everything. I mean, even if you, for some reason, like these huge, very simplistic figures, I would think you would have a problem with just how hollow this guy is. That's the best way I know to put it. I mean, aside from that, I guess he does have some nice paint applications. But seriously, for $50, something this hollow, this simplistic, and another Bumblebee, I really don't see it being its money's worth. Um, I mean, even for younger fans, if you're someone who has kids or knows kids, or you're a, a very young kid commenting on these videos, I would really like to know your thoughts if there are people who do like these. I mean, I assume there are some out there, but um, I just remember when I was a kid, I always wanted more complex figures figures i mean the armada line was out when i was younger when i first got into transformers and even then there was a lot of stuff about the toys that bothered me for those of you who know the armada line a lot of the figures were more simplistic they lacked a lot of articulation in contrast to some of the figures in the robots in disguise line transmetals 2 that kind of stuff and they were kind of cool, but that bothered me that they didn't have the articulation, that their proportions wore off. Take a character like Starscream, he looked so slim, sleek, and agile in the show, and he was like this big block on the toy, and a lot of their faces were wrong. All these were little details that bothered me as a kid. As a young kid buying Transformers, I noticed these things. I wanted show accuracy. I wanted heavy detail. Complex transformations, I mean, I wanted them probably so I could feel like I was bigger stuff than I was, but, um, and I could see that some of the figures released in the universe line that which were repaints of like beast wars figures sometimes they were kind of complex to transform and like of the car brothers in robots in disguise i could see some of those were pretty difficult in this case i really don't see the appeal here with some of the smaller figures that easily transform I could see that I could see people being into them even some older fans you know they could be kind of fun but to spend this much money for something like this once again that looks like most of it's hollow it's not even a big sturdy figure I, I just don't get it I really think Hasbro is just kind of trying to see how crappy they can make the figures with getting people to still buy them I mean even in car mode he doesn't look that great very blocky looking low on details not even many paint apps just Blah. Well, whatever. I mean, if they're still making these things, as long as they make a good amount of good Transformers, I can stay happy. And obviously, complaining about them on the internet is kind of pointless. Kind of fun, but kind of pointless at the same time. Anyways, moving on to the next class of figures, we have Minicon Akita. Now, these things are kind of interesting. For one, it's kind of cool that they've still kept the Minicon concept around. Speaking of Armada, it's been over 10 years and they're still using it, so that's pretty cool. 
And um, it looks like they're doing something kind of different with them, kind of like Soundwave's minions for Fall of Cybertron, which I actually think is kind of cool. We also see they have some kind of, I don't know, display piece or power generator, something like that that they're connected to. Um, I kind of like the looks of that too. If you look at the images from the convention, I'm pretty sure you can tell that that uh, back piece is translucent instead of just a solid color. That's cool. It'll give it more of a vibrant, fruity look. So as far as this Minicon himself, um, he's not one of the better looking ones. His transformation is really obvious from this picture, but um, you know, he, he doesn't look that bad. I mean, with smaller classes of figures we're kind of used to seeing animal transformers such as ravage and laser beak but um this guy just looks kind of cool i do like the tail it kind of looks like certain dogs tails you know something like an akita might have a puffier tail like that so that's pretty cool and um then we have an image of him with his armor on and um, i do really like that the armor adds a lot to him it looks pretty cool once again you can see they're translucent and I like that. Translucent pieces are pretty. Kind of like um, the Transformers Energon line with the Energon stars, Energon weapons. I was a big fan of that. It's cool to see they're doing something like that again. And we have him, in, I guess, in his um, deployer mode or disc mode, whatever you want to call it. Nothing much to say there. I guess kind of cool for what it is. Then we have Minicon Beast Box, which is curious that Beast Box is um, an Autobot this time around because he looks so similar to his G1 design. Usually when they switch factions, they'll be like a totally different character just with the same name, which is cool with me. But with this guy, it's kind of weird because he does look a lot like the original Beast Box. Anyways, he looks pretty cool from this image, I like the color scheme, the design, something different. You know, definitely seems like we're going to be getting variety within these Minicons. So that's cool. Really like the green eyes, adds contrast to him. And um, his disc mode looks better than Akita. Once again, more colors. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the pipe sticking out. It kind of breaks the disc-like shape. But um, I guess we'll have to see with the rest of them how that works out. And then um, this guy looks really cool with all of his armor on. He reminds me of something from like a Crash Bandicoot video game. Really, really cool looking. I'm hoping those armor pieces can attach to different figures or at least different minicons because uh, they definitely have a really nice look. I like how they seem to be characteristic of the characters as this guy um, has fire and I can't remember what Akita had but something different. So he looks cooler than Akita. Pretty cool for a uh, Minicon figure. Then we have Buzzsaw. Um, yeah, this guy, once again, kind of has a bland color scheme, kind of like Akita. Um, not really liking the looks of him. I mean, I do kind of like the dragon-like appearance. That's kind of cool. Curious that dragon would be an Autobot, but um, more variety. That's always a cool thing. And then we have him with his armor or energon, and he definitely looks better in this form, but still doesn't look like anything too great. Definitely the weakest out of these three, and also in um, disc mode, still doesn't look that great. So moving on to the next one, and that is Dragonus. Now this guy looks really impressive to me, at least on an initial glance. For one thing, the backdrop or big Decepticon symbol in the background being purple gives him a very fruity jungle-like appearance, and um, I think that's pretty cool. I do like his color scheme in himself also. The green along with that uh, bronzish orange is pretty cool. So moving on to the next image, we see him with his gear on, and um, he looks really, really cool. Once again, I like the way the purple contrast against the green. His armor also has unique features, looks like it has feathers by his feet. So once again, a unique look, looks like he's going to have his own personality. And then this guy doesn't have a disc mode, it's more of, I guess, a vehicle? Well, it sort of looks like a leaf, but I'm assuming it's supposed to look more like a jet or some kind of hovercraft. I think that's kind of cool, you know, that they're doing that. Some of these guys are going to be disc, and it looks like that's the case with the Autobots, whereas the Decepticons are going to be more of this shape. So I think that's a nice contrast. I don't want them to go too crazy with the modes, but having the Decepticons being something like this, a triangular shape, and the Autobots being round, that's pretty cool. I'm liking the looks of that. Then we have Rathbat. Uh, it's always cool to see Rathbat in a line. I've always liked this character. I don't really know for 
what reason. But um, he's always been cool. Uh, kind of upset that they changed up his color scheme. At least initially I was. The red and black isn't bad, though. Um, if they're going to change his color in any way, that isn't a bad choice. Red and black commonly look good together. Now, the background is a bit of a dull blue. Usually I'm not a big fan of that, but um, I actually think it works pretty well with this guy. He doesn't look like he has as much of a loud color scheme as the other ones. Once again, I usually do like those louder colors. I know there are some different opinions about that. But I think for this guy, it will make him look nice against the rest of them. A bit of a more quiet-toned color scheme. Then we have him with his armor. And um, he looks pretty cool. A little awkward, though. I don't really know what's going on. Is he, like, supposed to be a turret or something? I mean, I guess that's kind of cool. Isn't something we're really used to seeing a Transformers robot mode being sort of like a turret. So that's kind of cool. Uh, some of the stylized pieces do look like they're just kind of bulk, like just extra stuff added, but still kind of liking the looks of it. And then in a surfboard, whatever you want to call it mode, um, he looks nice. Um, different than Dragonus, but it looks like they'll fit well together. And then we have Scorpion. Now, this guy, at least initially, looks a lot bigger than the rest of the Minicons to me. At least on that Decepticon post, he looks like he takes up a lot more space, and I'm really liking the looks of this guy so far. Definitely brings back memories of Cybertron Dirt Boss, or dare I say it, Barney. But I know some people have problems with that color scheme. I like it. I think it looks cool. Um, he doesn't have as much contrast as he's purple, and the symbol in the background is also purple. But still looks pretty cool and then we can see him with his armor and i'm really liking the stylization used for this guy's armor it looks like he's going to have some bubbles i don't really know what the inspiration is for that it's kind of like boils and that's pretty cool i'm liking the sort of like faces on the end of his claws that the armor adds definitely gives him a more ferocious intimidating appearance so this guy looks pretty cool looks more sturdy than some of the other ones and then we have him in vehicle mode definitely the most diverse looking out of the three so far and i think he looks pretty cool not too much to say about it but um also cool looking then we have one called silver curious name as he isn't um, the color except for his face but um Aside from that, I'm really liking the looks of this guy. A lot of contrast in this image. Obviously, you have this background being green. It gives them a very vibrant, jungly look. Helps him fit in with the rest of them well. And his design looks pretty cool from what we can see here. Kind of like Scorpion. He's another big one. Obviously, another Decepticon. And then we have him with his armor on. This guy looks really cool to me with his armor. Um, I really like the dueling pistols, the claws behind his hands, and how he has the full face armor. That is really, really cool. Face and body armor. Very nice. Uh, the leg armor also looks pretty cool. Once again, he seems to have a different style, sort of a spiky look. Kind of leafy looking at the same time. Kind of like Age of Extinction Snarl. That's pretty cool. Vehicle mode. Eh, I don't really like the way his vehicle kind of droops in the front. Eh, that's just okay. Still, looks like a good minicon. Maybe one of the best outside of his alternate mode. Then we have a minicon, an Autobot minicon called Slipstream. I guess this is one of those... 2001 Robots in Disguise Grimlock cases where we have a character called Grimlock but they are nothing like the original character as this character doesn't look like a female and has no real resemblance to the traditional Transformers slipstream. Unless they have plans of using Rodimus or Hot Rod's character later on in the series, I don't know why they didn't call this Rodimus. We can see it looks like his pieces are going to have kind of a fiery theme. He also has the color scheme of Rodimus. His head sculpt seems to kind of fit too. Um, in itself, I think this looks like an okay one. Not as good as some of the Decepticon ones, but he definitely has personality. Looks pretty burly, too. Um, we have him with his armor, and he definitely has a unique appearance. The tiger mask on his face, or lion, is pretty cool. Kind of liking the looks of that. Um, liking the flames on his shoulders. The swords and the mask give him a very unique feel. Sort of like maybe a gladiator, or something from... The jungle like a jungle warrior or something like that so that's pretty nice gives him a unique feel don't know why he's called slipstream though 
Then we have him in disc mode. Nothing really to say here, other than his head and his feet are kind of obvious, and that's kind of a drawback. But overall, he looks like an okay minicon. I do gotta say that overall, with these minicons, I'm pretty impressed. I don't know what the overall opinion is of them, but uh, I'm liking the looks of them. They do look more simplistic, but... We know the Robots in Disguise line is going to be more simplistic, so I would much rather see them spending their time making designs like this, figures that we would expect to be simplistic even in a normal Transformers line, than making these giant, very simple, hollow figures. I think these Minicons do look unique. They look like they'll be a lot of fun. I really, really like the armor brings back a lot of memories of the Transformers Energon line, and I know a lot of people weren't a big fan of the Energon stars and the Energon weapons. I happen to really like them, and I think it's cool that we're seeing something kind of like that. It's fun to play with ones like that, using the term play loosely, just to, you know, switch their weapons, their armor, that kind of stuff. Um, it could actually be kind of entertaining, and it helps when they have all those different colors to go along with them. So... I like the looks of the Minicons overall, and I can't say for sure, but I could definitely see them selling well with younger fans, and possibly older fans. I could see them selling better than, like, what the one-step changers, that kind of stuff, but we'll have to see. Then we move on to these larger class figures called Minicon Deployers. So I guess the Minicons are going to kind of work as partners for these guys. And the first Minicon Deployer we have is Drift. So I'm guessing these are going to be sort of like a Voyager class figure. I'm not 100% sure though. Definitely doesn't look like anything too impressive from this image. Um, they are going to be $20, but I guess you can't call them Voyager because the Minicon is within that price. Uh, this Drift figure doesn't look that cool. Now, I do believe the images from the convention make it look kind of better, which is actually surprising because usually Hasbro's official images look the best. Then you see what it actually looks like, and it's not as good. But um, still, not too impressive, just very low on detail. Looks like he's going to have limited articulation, and... Um, Looks like the Warrior class figure is way more impressive, way more characterized. Vehicle mode also doesn't look that good. It does look like they're going for a Cybertronian vehicle. I guess you could give them kudos for that. It looks kind of odd, kind of incomplete. It does look like the front will be able to deploy a Minicon because it looks like there's kind of a rounded shape there where um, the disc might be able to insert and then a button on top. So hopefully that's the feature. That would actually be kind of cool. If I'm going to buy the Minicons, it might be incentive to buy some of these Minicon deployers if they have a gimmick like that. But in of himself, uh, this guy is not so great. Now his Minicon is one called Jetstorm. Um, eh, he's kind of cool looking. I don't like him as much as some of the other ones. He kind of has a punchable look on his face. <laughs> Not a big fan of his face. His body design is kind of unique, but uh, kind of like a gear-ish look rather than some of the fruitier looks of the other one. That's just okay. Um, then we have him in disc mode. Nothing really to say there. So moving on to Minicon Deployer's Fracture. Um, this is another one of those guys who seems like their design has a lot of potential, but this figure doesn't seem to take that potential into account. Now, I can say that this official Hasbro image does not look as good as the image at the convention, sort of like with Drift. I was actually kind of impressed with the figure from the previous image I saw. I'll leave a link to those images in the description below if you're interested. This one, though, doesn't look so bad. It does look like he'll have a decent number of paint apps, though he could use a lot more on his arms. Legs and body don't look so bad, though. Head sculpt's okay. Overall design, once again, looks like it has potential, but looks too blocky for such a skinny guy. So, move on to vehicle mode, and my oh my, this has to be one of the worst vehicle modes I've seen in a long time. I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Maybe a Cybertronian motorcycle has the appearance that it was literally just made to give this guy some kind of an alternate mode when one wasn't planned. I mean, this looks even worse than movie Scorpinox robot mode looked, and that thing wasn't that great. Just 
really not that impressive in this mode. Then we move on to his partner, Air Razor. Seems okay, kind of a unique design. I'm definitely liking the head sculpt. It's something different than the previous ones, but kind of keeps along with that more animal-like appearance. That's pretty cool. Uh, the color scheme's kind of bland, I would say. Maybe just because we've already seen some of the Robots in Disguise line that have this. But Ratbat's color scheme might look kind of cool with this guy, so I guess we'll have to see. Anyways, we have him in jet mode. Um, looks a little bit hollow, actually. Not a big fan of it on the weaker side as far as the minicons go in their alternate mode. Moving on to the Legion class figures, and we have Fix-It. Now, this is actually an interesting case because a lot of times we kind of have this feeling that the Legion classes are just basically like smaller versions than characters who otherwise should be bigger. This class, on the other hand, seems to work pretty well for Fix-It, and it seems like they did a pretty good job. I mean, maybe you could complain about them having drills for his hands other than uh, whatever he has in the show, but other than that, um, you know, he looks pretty accurate. He does have a symbol on his body. I'm not sure if he has that in the show or not. He does have a lot of personality in his face. He kind of looks happier on this toy than he seems in the show. He seems like he's often frustrated in the show, or he's happy for stupid reasons, you know, because of his programming and that kind of stuff. But it does look like it kind of fits with his personality in the show. So that's pretty cool. The head sculpt looks pretty accurate other than that um, as, as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, color scheme is also pretty nice. He's obviously mainly orange and gray with little bits of brownish yellow in there. And the light blue is also a nice addition. Articulation wise, you can't expect this guy to have too much, but it does look like they're giving him a good amount for what he can have. So for being a Legion class figure, I've got to say it looks like Hasbro did a pretty nice job on Fix It. Then we have him in vehicle mode, also looks pretty cool. I mean, you're not going to expect anything too impressive for this guy. You could probably criticize him because uh, his head's a little bit obvious. But um, I think the vehicle's actually kind of cool. Not too much to complain about it. I do like the big wheels in the back. That's one of the main features that stands out. The drills in the front are pretty cool. So, liking the looks of Fix It overall. Might actually buy him. Then we have Legion Class Underbite. Mm. Really, really not liking the looks of this guy. Also, very hollow look, as we've seen with some of the other figures. Looks like he'll have very limited articulation. And overall, unless there's smaller versions of this guy, he's a pretty big dude in the show, so I don't know why they're giving him a Legion-class figure, unless they plan to give him a Warrior class as well. Vehicle mode, kind of like with Fracture's vehicle, just looks random. Don't really get the point of it looks forced not a big fan finishing all of those classes up we finally get to what i would think would be the most anticipated class of this line and probably the only class that a lot of traditional transformers collectors care about if they're interested in the line at all and that is the warrior class figures and somewhat disappointingly there have only been two warrior class figures revealed at this toy fair but I guess we kind of expected that. We know that the main line really isn't the big focus in the Robots in Disguise toy line. So I guess we have to just take what we've got and let's take a look at the figures. First up, we have Warrior Class Jazz. Initial impressions of this guy are that he looks pretty decent. He kind of follows a design that we've seen a lot in the past, especially for Jazz's character. To me, he basically comes off like um, Generations or Reveal the Shield Jazz in Robots in Disguise style, other than a few minor differences like his legs are shorter and he has some more kibble, unfortunately. But he doesn't look like a bad figure overall. He has a nice color scheme, once again typical of Jazz. The head sculpt is obviously a little bit interesting because we're usually used to seeing Jazz with some sort of a visor. And this time he just has two eyes. And I think that's actually pretty cool. You know, it's cool to see something different. I do believe in some clips of the show we see he is able to pull a visor down. So I guess that's going to be another thing, kind of like they had Battle Mask in Transformers Animated. Maybe in this they use visors for certain functions. I kind of like that idea, but obviously he isn't going to have that on the figure, or at least not that we could see. The weapon is in a little bit of a weird position here, but it looks like a pretty nice weapon. Some multifunction, maybe he can use it as a spear, and also 
as a gun, or more specifically, some sort of rifle. So, liking the looks of that. Uh, looks like he'll have some decent articulation, too. Nothing extraordinary. Um, the main things I don't like about this guy are in regards to the kibble. The leg kibble is really, really bulky. I wish they would have made some attempt to hide that extra bulk in the wheels. Then behind his shoulders, it looks like it gets um, a little bit clunky, too. But other than that, not too much wrong with this guy. I mean, you could always criticize him for needing more detail, or maybe you don't like his head design, but those things are pretty much par for the course with the Robots in Disguise line. So for what we can expect for a Warrior class figure from the line, I think he looks pretty good and better than the ones we've already seen, so hopefully he turns out to be better. Then in vehicle mode, eh, it's one of the weaker jazz vehicles we've seen. Still not too bad, but um, not a big fan of a lot of the robots in disguise alternate modes. Really not liking the looks of the window. For one thing, I think these guys would work out a lot better if they had the translucent window. Sometimes the painted windows works out better, but I just feel like with these figures, the translucent windows would look nicer. And also, the top of the car looks kind of flat. Um, not really crazy about that. Kind of like how it's a more bulky, rounded car as opposed to ones like Bumblebee, which kind of have a weird shape. This is definitely nicer in regards to shape. Other than that, not too much to say about the car mode, but overall this Jazz does look like a pretty decent figure. Then the second Warrior class we'll be discussing, and the final figure for this discussion video is a figure of one of the first three characters revealed for this series, yet the last of the main Autobots to get a figure, and of course that is Warrior class Sideswipe. Impressions from looking at the images we've gotten of this guy, I would say he looks like he's worth the wait. Now, my initial impressions were not that positive. When I first seen this guy, I don't know, I had some problems with the figure. But the more I look at him, the more I'm happy with what we've gotten for Sideswipe. One of the big problems I had initially was some of his proportions, as obviously they're a little bit different than the show. In the show, he has a bigger chest, his forearms don't have all of that extra kibble along with his legs they have more of a sleek design overall in the show i'd say he has more of a sleek slender appearance whereas this figure has some extra bulk but other than that he really does look pretty good for sideswipe he does have some unnecessary bulk but his design is pretty close to what he has in the show, at least for what we can expect for um, designs like these and the Transformers animated designs. And I think a lot of that could be fixed with some influence from the Revenge of the Fallen toy line, just amp up the complexity of the transformations but that isn't going to really happen. Other than those few minor problems, this guy has a really nice color scheme. I like the bold shade of red against the dark black. Really nice contrast there, along with some silver and blue details. It just helps bring out a little bit more color on this guy. He doesn't have a ton of paint apps, but I don't really think he needs them. The way his detailing is done kind of makes up for it. Chest detailing's really nice. I like the three vents on each side of his chest. Like I said, I kind of was hoping his upper body would be bigger, but I think it's big enough that it can descend into a skinnier waist and give him kind of a slim appearance. We don't want this guy to be too buff. It seems like Bumblebee's more of a bulky guy in this show. This guy's more of the lean muscular, I guess you could say, more of a swordsman, so that's pretty cool. And speaking of the sword, the sword looks really nice. It's a basic sword, but it looks cool. It kind of gives more purpose to Bumblebee having a sword, at least I feel that way, because we haven't really seen Bumblebee having a sword in the show, but this way maybe they're supposed to be able to spar against each other or something like that. This guy's sword definitely looks nicer than Bumblebee's too. Also, the head sculpt looks pretty good. It seems like they had the character in mind as well. It looks pretty accurate as far as detailing. Like I said, the face fits the character. Yeah, not too much to really complain about this guy. Just a few minor things in regards to proportions, and then stuff we can just expect in the Robots in Disguise line. I actually don't think the lack of detail is really a problem with this figure. I think he looks pretty good. What I mean by the problems we're going to see in the Robots in Disguise line is pretty much in regard to all of the extra bulk. Even his feet do look a little bit clunky and I feel like that's unfortunate. Really don't like all of that kibble on the legs. But those are my big problems. If there was some way to get rid of those, it would really amp up this figure because, in my opinion, he already does look pretty cool. But I guess we'll have to see once there's some in-hand images of him. 
Anyways, moving on to his vehicle mode, really, really nice looking vehicle. Unlike some of the other robots in disguise figures, this guy fixes the problem of the windows. They're clear, at least they appear to be clear on these images, and that is really cool. I like the detailing around the back of the car. It's kind of like pinkish, Japanese-looking writing. Really, really nice. Overall, nice car design. A lot sleeker than some of the other ones we've seen in this line. Like I said, Bumblebees, I guess they were going for a muscle car appearance, but I think it was kind of a fail. It just looked awkward. This guy seems to have a nice design. Really gives off a sleek appearance, and I think that's pretty nice. Once again, the color scheme works nicely in this mode, too. The red and the black kind of gives him that bad boy appearance that I guess he's supposed to have. Kind of like Deadpool, color scheme works, too. So, that's pretty cool. I'm not really a big fan of the wheel design. They're a little simplistic, but they don't look too bad. Kind of wish the wheels were um, symmetrical. As we can see, the wheel in the back has a red middle, and the one in the front is black. Eh... That kind of bothers me, but not too much. Yeah, overall, really liking the looks of this guy in both modes. He definitely looks like the best Robots in Disguise figure that was revealed at this toy fair, and maybe the best one we've seen so far. But that really isn't saying that much when it comes to this line. So I'm going to let that wrap up the discussion of all of the Robots in Disguise figures revealed at this toy fair. Overall thoughts... You know, we've seen a lot of stuff that I guess you could classify as junk, crap, whatever label you like to put on it. We know we're going to be getting a lot of stuff like Super Class Bumblebee, One Step Changer, Three Step Changers, but we did also see some pretty cool stuff. Um, Legion Class Fix It actually works out pretty well for the character. The Minicons seem like a cool gimmick. Considering this line is really gimmicky, we know we're going to get them. They may as well be cool gimmicks. And I would say the Warrior Class figures look pretty impressive for what we're going to get in this line. Definitely a contrast from the Generations figures revealed at the Toy Fair. Obviously, like, all of those guys were awesome. These, most of the stuff revealed was just okay, but we did see some pretty cool stuff. And I'll leave it at that. If you guys want to leave your thoughts in the comments section below, please feel free to do that. Do you like what was revealed at this toy fair? Maybe you like a lot of the extra stuff. Maybe you really don't mind or like when Hasbro adds a lot of one-step changers and simpler, just more fun-aimed gimmicky toys to the toy line. Or maybe you don't like all of that stuff along with the Warrior class and Minicon type figures. Maybe you're just hoping this is all a flop as well, so Hasbro can move on to another toy line that just all around looks better than the Robots in Disguise toy line leave your thoughts in the comment section below along with any topic suggestions you might have pertaining to robots in disguise toy line or cartoon transformers 5 or the transformers generations toy line leave it all in the comment section below if you're interested in more transformers commentary on any of those topics you can check out my playlist where i discuss various transformers topics you can also check out my playlist for transformers stop motion videos so lots of cool stuff Feel free to check it out if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, and have a good one, guys.